So, uh, so I, I did the uniform uh, middle eigenvalue condition last time, uh, so with satisfying certain conditions. And um, so mainly uh, we want to show that uh, uh, this uh, uniform middle eigenvalue condition and the lens, uh, having a lens cone is the uh, uh, same uh, conditions, okay, and um, so this here I'm concerned with uh, actually uh, having a, a, a lens, okay. Uh, okay. So now uh, 5.3 is the characterization of lens shaped uh, representation. So, uh, so first of all, uh, we uh, want to uh, look at this, um, or uh, with the uh, or tilde universal cover, and uh, you have this uh, uh, properly convex RPN, and the P is the end vertex. Uh, then the, um, so first, uh, let's say this is a hyperbolic group. Okay, and uh, then the, so, um, uh, so then uh, you, uh, you want to consider this as a, 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 a this representation, so it has n eigen n plus one eigenvalue. So you can write eigenvalues like this here, and uh, of course there is this uh, ordering. Of course, uh, ve is the eigen vector at the eigenvalue at ve because this is a fixed point here, and uh, so. Uh, so that's what we have. And the, uh, the thing is now we can take the linear part. So uh, so we recall that this matrix has a uh, 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 form like this, uh, where this is a uh, SLNR, uh, SLN plus one R here, okay? Plus minus N, N R, not N plus one R and um, So then if you just consider this uh, SLNR path uh, given by H hat there, then the, uh, it has N eigenvalue like this, uh, and the multiple is one, okay, so for the H hat. So this one is supposed to be in SL uh, N plus one R. So you normalize the upper left part into this. So these are called the uh, relative norms, and the, these original eigenvalue satisfy this uh, relation here. And um, so, uh, so then the, we we need to consider uh, these eigenvalues, and um, uh, so the length is actually uh, only given by in terms of since uh, length is uh, in terms of this uh, transverse. Uh, projective structure with Hilbert metric. So you just need to consider the relative eigenvalue, okay? Uh, but uh, they have same ratio, so you can just uh, think of it this way. So you can drop the tilde here. Okay, um, and uh, uh, so in the hyperbolic case, uh, you can define these two uh, invariants uh, for each element, the proximal element that uh, uh, you you take the uh, difference of ratios uh, between these things and uh, and the, these uh, numbers are uh, defined like this uh, and then the uh, uh, Kushat uh, showed that this uh, happens so it's always uh, these alpha and beta are between one and infinity and uh, these. The sigma is uh, the infimum of all those things, and the beta sigma is infimum of all those. So you can uh, see this is happening, and uh, um, so this these all only depend on H hat. Okay, and the, uh, okay, so they uh, so then uh, so Kushat theorem is that uh, you have these inequalities here, and. Uh, um, and so basically, you just need to uh, work with these uh, ratios. Uh, 
these and uh, so the, these can be i mean the, these numbers these these things can turn into uh, equations like this and uh, uh so you work with that and then uh, you can prove this but uh, more generally uh, uh it's not in the non hyperbolic case you can even prove this and uh, actually uh, uh so this is uh, when the uh, beta is infinity and alpha is very close to 1 okay so then this is n minus 1 here and then this is infinity so it's 1 over n then you get this uh, equation and uh, this is very trivial exercise in just uh, this kind of uh, summation and uh, some uh, equality using inequality and like this okay okay <clears throat> so uh so the uh next i want to talk about the uh, uh ah, right so when does a uniform middle eigenvalue condition not satisfied is that suppose it satisfies at least the middle eigenvalue condition which means that this is uh, uh bigger than one and um, uh but uh, you could have some element which is this is the same big be, be, bigger than uh then then uh of course that uh, that will uh, kind of, uh, that will show that the uh, lens doesn't exist. So we we don't want that to happen for any element. But uh, you could still have this going to zero. Okay. So then the this ratio. Okay. So what we needed was uh, some constant times. Uh, this is not bounded below by some constant times so length and above by this. But so so this ratio should converge to some positive number. In I mean, at least bigger than some uniformly uh, uh, big uh, number bigger than zero. <coughs> but uh, but it could still go to zero. Okay, so that's the condition that uh, we uh, have to worry about. And uh, this kind of phenomenon can happen actually. So like uh, in the Magulus uh, invariant and that kind of thing. So this is sort of a diffusion process of invariance. And uh, so now we want to consider the orbits. Uh, uh, so video uh, so uh, uh so we we want to first of all set up this uh, tube uh with this vertex and then the, so there's a this is a transverse uh structure so so you want to take some uh compact set in the, the convex hull of it in the tube so if l is some sort of a distance set in this uh boundary of the tube, then you can take the convex hull, and that's again a distance set. Okay, If you have uh, L being the invariant set, then this is convex set hull is also invariant. Okay. Uh, so the transversal boundary set is the uh, compact set, uh, which means an interior of every gray segment from B to minus B. And the limit set to be the smallest, non-empty compact uh, uh, gamma invariant transversal boundary set. Okay, and uh, so the uh, so what uh, we want to prove is that the transversal uh, gamma e invariant compact set uh, exists and is unique, and uh, and uh, it's also the the convex hull with the of C with intersection with this boundary is again itself. Okay, so that's what uh, we are aiming to prove here. Uh, so, um, uh, all right, uh, under the condition that, uh, right, so I forgot the premise. So, premise is that if it satisfies the uniform middle eigenvalue condition, okay, sure, um, I should say, uh, so the premise is button there. Okay, uh, and so the basically this will be proven uh, that uh, here we show that C is independent of the choice, uh, and uh, um, it's a gray segment at unique point, and this contains C, and is uh, yeah, so so the uniqueness part will show this is C. Okay, so that's essential. Uh, Okay, so five ten uh three ten is that the uh, uh 
Okay. Uh, right. So this is uh, for general case. If you have a uniform eigenvalue condition, then there is some limit set, and this is uh, which is unique, and then uh, so so homeomorphic, and and so on. So that's the thing we want to prove. Yeah, and. Um, Right, so uh, uh, so basically, in the hyperbolic group case, I uh, so if you satisfy the uniform middle eigenvalue condition, then the, uh, you can prove certain lemmas that. Uh, so it, it, uh, so basically, uh, if you have any uh, sequence of elements and the sequence of attracting fixed point and repelling fixed points. Uh, uh, convergence and uh, eigenvalue converges to infinity, then the point uh, A infinity actually is a geometric limit of any uh, com for any compact set gamma i k. So, so it is as uh, convergence uh, groups uh, argument that if you have some certain uh, limits and so on, then this uh, uh, this. Uh, we force everything uh, compact set to converge to a, a point. Okay, so the, so these are just uh, a, a, some estimates of the how the uh, distance is between things and so on. Okay, and then the, so once we have this uniform eigenvalue condition, then uh, so this is for not, uh, um, so. <clears throat> So then the, this this one shows that any uh, ga gamma invariant set uh, will contain the geometric limit of any sort of sequences like this. And that's again the fact that you, this set will have to contain these A and R, uh, these uh, limits uh, of the fixed points and so on. Okay, So those are the uh, ideas and um, and for nine hyperbolic groups, uh, <coughs> mm. so it's a non hyperbolic or virtually factorizable case with the satisfying uniform with the eigenvalue condition. <coughs> then <coughs> again, any bound, uh, boundary invariant set. Uh, so I should say it's gamma uh, tilde invariant set again, then the, it will contain any sort of uh, uh, limit of any compact set on the sequences. Uh, so those uh, kind of things, uh, and uh, uh, so if you have any uh, transposer gamma tilde invariant uh, boundary set, then the, uh, then you can uh, prove that uh, these uh, things contain all the limit set and all the fixed point sets and. Uh, uh, and these uh, any segment uh, will meet uh, L at unique points and uh, uh, and so on. So this is actually homeomorphic S n minus one and so on. Okay. So it also this is unique. If you have any gamma tilde invariant set, then you can uh, show that it has to be the same. So that's uh, again because this uh, distance uh, set and then. Uh, you just have to follow uh, and then show that they have to be contained in one or one or another, okay? Because of the these uh, attracting limit point things, okay? So that's the thing. Uh, okay. Um. Right. So, uh, so if you don't have that, then you can easily get the uh, uh, these uh, proper convexity broken or so limit. Get, uh, non, it won't be distance. Okay, so that's a basic argument here. And next, uh, I have some uh, extension of Kozur's. Uh, so the Kozur's openness is working for usually cross manifold or cross ovipole, but you can do it with the strictly convex boundary. So, uh, so suppose you have a strictly convex C2 boundary. Uh, then the, uh, so whenever you perturb the, uh, so you start with some properly convex uh, OV4 with the strictly convex boundary, and this is holonomy representation. 
And suppose you change the uh, holonomy a little bit, so so there is some neighborhood, so that every H prime still acts on some properly convex domain, where uh, it is a, a, a boundary with a strictly convex boundary. Okay. So here I, I mean, of course, that strictly convex means C two here. So in some other books is uh, at least has to be C two, but uh, uh, some people don't do that, but. Um, so the basic argument is to use a uh, strictly convex Hessian functions, and uh, uh, so so for if you have a boundary which is C two, then this Hessian is positive definite or ne negative definite. That those are fixed. Okay, so as long as you change uh, by a small amount, then uh, it doesn't change. Okay, so uh, so since we are working on a compact set anyway, so. So skip this proof here, um, and uh, so you can do that for the uh, tube domain. So if you have some uh, uh, tube domain and then you have a uh, perturb the holonomy a little, then uh, you will. Uh, so if you have some something uh, strictly convex hypersurface in the tube domain, uh, uh, with, whose boundary is actually distance set, then the then, uh, so there's some neighborhood where this uh, still, you will still have some uh, strictly uh, convex uh, hypersurface again, okay. So, okay, so that's the thing I'm doing and, um, okay. And here, uh, the uh, so uh, actually you should remember what the strictly, uh, strict, strict lens is that the, you have this top and bottom hypersurface, but so if you look at their boundary, they, they have to coincide and their union is the boundary. But, uh, of course, A and B has to be destroyed and uh, the closure is the uh, whole, whole topological boundary. Okay. So uh, so then, uh, so if you have a lens shaped, uh, then, uh, then this will meet this lens at the unique point and this uh, conversely, this property will imply the strictness of D again and uh, uh, and so on. Okay. So, uh, so this theorem is that uh, if you have some thing that X1 properly convex RPN and there's a tube and it satisfy uniform middle eigenvalue condition uh, and x1 distance convex set, uh, then uh, you can obtain a lens uh, with a smooth uh, boundary. Okay, so that's the thing that uh, we are aiming for here. So uniform middle eigenvalue condition will imply that there is a lens. Okay, so that's, so how we do that is uh, you cover these, uh, uh, so for any k actually in the compact set in the side the tube, the, uh, you, uh, uh, all right, so what is K? Uh, so, right, so if you have any distance compact convex set, then the projection has to be the whole of it. And then the, so uh, in the boundary of this, uh, in the boundary of tube intersect K, then there's some, this distance set, and then the, so you, you can try to cover this uh, K with some uh, finitely many points and then their orbits. And then the, these uh, these things will, uh, so if you take a union, then the, they will form some sort of a poly. Uh, so if you take the convex hull, you will find uh, some sort of a, a distance set from K and C1. And then you can uh, uh, then you can find the poly polyhedral uh, surface, which is uh, uh, which doesn't contain any line, okay, any straight line in the boundary. So so it is actually sort of a, a only union of only compact uh, triangles which are meeting each other in convex angles. Okay. So th those are again using some sort of a pulling back geometric argument that. This doesn't happen, and then uh, once you have that, then uh, you can use the uh, uh, 
you can use the smoothing argument, right? So, right. So you have some polyhedral uh, surface. You obtain those, and then the uh, uh, and then these two surfaces uh, have. Uh, Uh, right, so so you have to use some uh, theorem uh, 4.4, 4. 4, uh, then the, right, by, by duality, we have to push it into the asymptotically, uh, uh, the affine case, and then you obtain uh, smooth hypersurface, and then you uh, obtain back the uh, hypersurface for that. Okay, and then the next side we want to prove this theorem uh, four point five. So, so we all did the forward direction. So if you satisfy uniform middle eigenvalue condition, then you get this lens. And then we need to do some converse that if you have a lens, then the, you can use that to get a uniform middle eigenvalue condition. Okay, so the uh, theorem is that. So it's equivalence between these two. And the way to do it is, so uh, So I did make some mistakes. So I have to first show that the L has to be strict lens. And the, so uh, so this can be done by some uh, geodesic limit argument again, but uh, I, I don't want to go through it here. But uh, anyway, so, so if you have this strict lens, then you can show that there is a, a um, uniform middle eigenvalue condition is satisfied and the, uh, uh, way to do it is that the, again, this H is determined by this uh, map to H hat and the lambda E and this co-cycle. Uh, so, uh, so we have a lens, so we, we can set the co-cycle to be zero. Uh, uh, there's a spelling error here. Um, and uh, so, so then there is still a lens. So that's what uh, we, we want to show and uh, um, so basically, this is because the uh, the the uh, uh, the uh, then the because then the thing is that you have to uh, kind of uh, show by some argument here, and then that the everything is a strictly convex, and some something has to go to zero. So. Uh, so if you have proven that, so I just need to prove for this case when B is zero. Okay, so when uh, when this cos cycle B is zero, then um, uh, so so uh, so the, there's some argument here that that shows that there still is a lens if you set B to be zero. Uh, and and here the. Uh, the thing is that uh, then once you have B zero, then there's a totally geodesic uh, hyperplane where it uh, it acts, uh, and then the um, uh, and then these uh, uh, then you can consider these uh, 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 these abelianization map uh, from this fundamental group to H one, and the, this this map going to log to log lambda H C. This defines a homomorphism. Okay, so it's a cohomology class. And so give some Riemannian metric and the current is uh, some transverse measure so on the unit uh, tangent bundle. So, so of course this is uh, oriented geodesics uh, here. So, uh, so we have this uh, uh, homomorphism. So, so this can be, so you can send this, you can extend this to uh, 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 so close curve to a current because you can think of these uh, these uh, these things as a current. So th this element here can be represented as current. So so this map will extend to currents. Okay, and uh, so uh, lambda h uh, gives you some continuous function here, and uh, is given by some integrating the one form uh, along cross curve. Uh, I should say u u sub sigma e. Not not sorry. That should be wrong here. Okay, and then the, this is home. So uh, so then the uh, you you uh, have these uh, maximal eigenvalue is get again big bigger than one because if not then you can uh, this is just uh, 
wireless uh, uniform uh, eigenvalue condition. And of course, the, there is uh, no invariant distance set in this case. Okay, so that's uh, if if not. Okay, so that's the case. And uh, uh, so if the CG is uh, so it's the length minimum length, and then you have this. Uh, so suppose this doesn't uh, is not satisfied, then you can uh, show that, uh, and then uh, then you have this kind of condition where this is zero, goes to zero, and then the, this limit is some kind of a. Uh, uh, so th this will compose to some uh, geodesic current, and uh, and then the, so if this is actually zero. Okay, so lambda h then uh, send you obtain some sort of contradiction. So this is not zero here uh, because of these um, these uh, inequalities that I got for the uh, and and the n minus one dimensional cases. Okay, and the, and then the uh, so so this means that this image is not zero, and then uh, therefore you can change in the first cohomology. First homology is not zero, so uh, so you can change the co homology class of H prime by changing this, uh, so that this actually becomes bigger than this, and then it, then you can show that uh, this is less than zero actually, because uh, uh, the, the, this condition will show you that. Uh, so this this becoming bigger means that uh, this is, is growing faster than this one. Okay, so that's uh, less than zero. So then uh, there is no distance invariant set. So that's the, how you obtain this contradiction. Right, uh, so the next one is actually how to find the really the lens. And so there's something called the triangle condition and so on. Okay. Uh, and so here, uh, so if you, uh, so generally then shape and the uniform middle eigenvalue condition are the same. And, and if you have some uh, nice conditions like virtually factorizable triangle condition, then uh, it's the same as having lens shape as a uh, uniform eigenvalue condition. Okay, uh, so that's just that. Uh, so, uh, so in the totally geodesic case, it, there's some uh, flat plane, uh, and then you can always find the lens uh, by taking sufficiently small uh, neighborhood here. Okay, so that's the condition. And triangle condition is essentially similar to that idea. Okay, so that's the first part. Uh, I will come back and we'll do uh, section five point four.